Welcome back to the Six Figure Mastermind. My name is Marianne Denovelis. I'm so glad you joined us here today. We're going to have a really in-depth discussion on how to spot a pathological liar. And at the end, I want to show you how this relates to building your six-figure business. So stay tuned. This is a tough question, how to uh, spot a pathological liar. It kind of feels icky to even have to search for this, right? Because if there's something that's making you search for this topic, you got to do a gut check and say, oh, there's already a red flag, okay? So let's outline the, the top things to look for when you're trying to spot this pathological liar and see what tendencies they have. The first thing you're going to want to look for in a pathological liar is their overall behavior. You know, do they have manipulative tendencies? Do they have low self-esteem? Are they wanting something? Do they have a motive? You know, that's one of the first things to look for when you're questioning, is someone lying to me? Or even are they just exaggerating? Or, you know, in the sales conversation, maybe in your business, if you're trying to pitch someone something or someone's trying to pitch you something, is there, is there an agenda? Is there a behavior that would incentivize them to exaggerate? So look for that. That's the first checkpoint you're going to want to look for. Second checkpoint is called story adoption. If you find that you have heard this story before or it sounds familiar, what pathological liars will sometimes do is take a story that they've either heard from someone else or heard the news and they'll regurgitate it as if it's their own. Sometimes they'll put themselves in that in that spot, in that storyteller spot, or as if they were in a situation they were in that they didn't ever have a participation in. So they'll, they'll adopt these stories and take them on as their own. Again, it's part of that behavior to, to boost their ego or to build their credibility. A lot of pathological liars will take that idea and, and make it their own identity. So watch for story adopting. The third thing you're going to want to look for is called question dodging. Now question dodging happens, you know, if you ever want to see a perfect example of question dodging, just go watch a political debate. You know, question dodging is, is almost a skill that pathological liars have. You know, and I say pathological liars, and that has its own definition. It means that they are wired to lie. And when they have these question dodging, you'll ask them a direct question and they will address the topic, but not the answer to your question. So for example, if you were to ask them, hey, Saturday night at six o'clock, where were you? They would say, oh, you know, this weekend I had a great time out bowling with my friends and we did all of these fun activities. So it's addressing the topic of the question, but it's not answering where they were Saturday night at six o'clock. So that's something to watch for is that question dodging, something that feels like an answer, but isn't really. The next thing you're going to want to watch for in a pathological liar is something surprising. It's excessive flirting. And it doesn't always happen with a member of the opposite sex. It, it could be something where they do a laughing nudge or a distraction with, you know, their, their physical body with a nudge or a, or a push or something that could be considered flirtatious, right? It's using the, the energy of that motion to distract from the question or the topic at hand. So it, it, excessive flirting could look like a, a compliment or it could look like a flirtatious touch or it could look like any myriad of other different gestures that could use that energy to distract you from the, top, from the topic at hand. So watch for that in pathological liars. The last thing you're going to want to watch out for is eye contact. Now this is interesting because normal everyday liars have different eye contact tendencies than pathological liars tend to have. Pathological liars know that they're lying. It's a habit for them. It's almost part of their biology. So they do it differently than someone who's lying for the first time and trying to get away with it. You know, if I, if I ask my five-year-old a question and he's going to try and tell me a lie, he's going to tell me a lie differently than someone who's experienced in this arena and knows what to adjust for. So a pathological liar will have this tendency to make direct eye contact with you for a really long time. And what they're looking for subconsciously is for, they're, they're taking the scan of you and saying, if I tell them this lie, I'm going to watch them and see whether or not they believe what I'm telling them. Now, a novice liar, we'll call them, will usually look away or avoid eye contact or prevent themselves from making direct eye contact with you. But a pathological liar, remember, they have ego at play here. They have 
uh, a lot of pride at play here and they want to see if they can outwit you. So when you're working with a pathological liar, they will maintain excessive eye contact, especially after they've answered you because they're watching for your reaction to their response. Something that we don't really have control of is the dilation of our pupils, okay? So when they're making that excessive eye contact with you, have the eye contact right back with them and watch their pupils dilate. If their pupils get bigger, that could be an indicator that their subconscious mind is, le what their subconscious mind is doing is actually expanding their vision, allowing more light to come in. We do this whenever we study something. We do this whenever we're looking at someone we like. We do this whenever we're, we're looking for something in the dark. The brain needs to have more information to put in. So subconsciously, the brain's gonna say, we need more input, so we're gonna open up the dilation of the pupils so that we can take in more input. And when someone's studying you, this is what they'll do. Their pupils will dilate subconsciously. I remember I was sitting around the table with a group of friends and uh, they said, Marianne, you are the human lie detector. So let's play a game. And I was like, oh, no pressure, right? Okay, let's play this game. So we sit around this table with, with four perfect strangers that I've never met before. And this one person who knows them and knows me. And they say, Marianne, I want you to put on your, your lie detector test and I want you to go around and see if you can tell these guys are lying. I'm like, okay, that's, that's kind of weird, but okay, well, let's play the game. Let's play the game, true truths and a lie, okay? So I say, hey guys, why don't you make up these two things that are true about you and, and then fabricate a lie and then tell me all three. And so I go around this table and I'm totally up in their grill. I'm totally up in their face that they're telling me these lies because I'm watching their eyes. And I'm also studying, is this person used to lying or is this person a novice at it? Now we all tell white lies every single day. We all use superlatives that could be considered a stretching or an exaggeration of the truth. That's a form of lying. So I'm, I'm watching these guys and I go around and, and I'm watching for their eyes, right? And I'm watching these two truths and a lies come out. And, and of course they were smart enough to make it sound realistic and, and try and trick me. You know, maybe they have four sisters and they tell me they have five. And when I go around to these, these people, I had them tell me the truth, truths and a lie. And I would say, number two is a lie. And then I would go to the next one and I would say, number three was a lie. And then I would go to the next one, number one was a lie. And then the next one, number two was a lie. And it was fascinating because 75% of the time, three out of the four people, I nailed it. And it was because I was watching for the pupil dilation. Now I knew that they were gonna lie to me. They knew that they were gonna lie to me, okay? So that could be a, a relative example of a pathological liar. The pathological liar knows that they're gonna lie. They're planning on it, okay? They're usually thinking about it beforehand. So this was a perfect opportunity for me to test this out. And this, this pupil dilation will oftentimes give that away. So remember, a pathological liar is someone who does this by habit, you know, and, and they're usually doing it because they want to, you know, again, inflate their ego. They want to uh, have this kind of manipulative tendency. I, I met someone early in my life who actually bragged about being a pathological liar. So sometimes patholo pathological liars will even tell you how successful they are at lying or storytelling and manipulation. So again, if, there's, if nothing else, that is a huge red flag. Now a disclaimer, if you're used to use any of this information I've given you in this video today, you are not allowed to use it to become a pathological liar or to become a better pathological liar, okay? This information is strictly for you to use to determine whether or not the person in front of you is going to tell the truth or not and what's best for you. You're strictly forbidden from using this information to manipulate others, okay? You have to pinky promise me, like through the screen, all right? Keep an eye out for that and always do a gut check and then put your best foot forward as far as making your next move. Now in building your six figure business, this is really helpful because as you're growing, as you're expanding, you're gonna find that you are going to do joint ventures, alliances, you're gonna to wanna to partner with people here and there. And when you're doing that, you want to have a relationship of trust, okay? When you're having those conversations, you're gonna be sitting down in front of these people either virtually or in person and you wanna put them to this test right? Because you want people with great results. You want people with great lists. You want people with, that can help you in your business. And if they're saying that they can, always do your background check, you know, your, your social proof, all that work, but also do this gut check and see, okay, is this person a good person to work with or is it someone I should totally avoid? 
Okay, you've got the tools that you need. Remember that these tools aren't strict science, so check that gut every time you feel like you need to. Remember to hit the subscribe button. We'll be sharing a lot more with you right here on the Six Figure Mastermind. See you tomorrow.